from San Francisco. It's The Cube. Here is your host, Jeff Frick. Hi, Jeff Rick here with theCUBE. We're on the ground at Location and Context World at the JW Marriott in San Francisco, California. It's a conference really focused on um, applications and location and context uh, and what people can do now with, the kind of, it's kind of like GPS for inside. Um, it's a pretty exciting uh, space and there's a lot of interesting applications that are kind of growing out of the RFID space, really barcode mm -hmm. reading, kind of a simple thing that was used more in supply chain, but now with the power of mobile applications that we're all carrying around and all these apps on these phones, people are doing a lot of interesting things. So I'm excited to jo be joined by our next guest, uh, Avi Sakaju, CEO of Sprio. Welcome. Thank you, thank you very much. So give uh, people kind of a quick overview on Sprio. What do you guys do for uh, people that aren't familiar with the company? Okay, uh, we solve the issue of uh, indoor positioning. And uh, the most element uh, thing that we do is we generate the X, Y, Z of uh, the person in the, in the location. Uh, once we know the location of, of a person in the, in a venue, in a place like this, or a hospital shopping center, there are a lot of uh, goods that can come out of it. We can then create a, a program that's called wayfinding or indoor navigation. We can navigate a person from place to place. For this purpose, we need to know all the time the person location. We can uh, push content that is relevant to the person location. We can uh, show you on the map where other people that are sharing their location with you uh, are. Uh, that's the essence of uh, what we're doing. Okay, so you said you you guys trap it on the X, Y, and Z. So you do have yeah. you do have height as well. And then we talked to the prior guests that that's the location piece. But then you really need the context piece. You need it to put it against the map, against something, exactly. to know exactly whether you're in the hospital or whether you're at the basketball court or what are the obstacles between point A and point B. Yes, uh, it's a simple thing, X, Y, Z, but uh, it's quite complicated to achieve uh, those three parameters. For, for this purpose, we need, first of all, to have sensors that uh, we position in, in the venue. Uh, those sensors, which are the beacons, they transmit very basic information. One is their number, and the second thing is how far I am from the, from the sensor, from the beacon. Uh, we need to have the map of the place, and uh, it involves getting the maps, positioning the sensors, and then another process is uh, we need to walk around and collect data. The end result is that we can generate the specific X, Y, Z. Now, the Z is very problematic. Knowing how your height is, uh, is one of the biggest challenges that we faced actually in our uh, installation in shopping centers in the US. Shopping centers are very, are large open spaces. And uh, there are limitations where you can put those beacons. You know, it needs to integrate with the- That's right, because you got such a big space. Not just, but also with the style of the, th they don't want to see beacons like this hanging on the wall and so right, forth. Right. So sometimes we put them very quite high, and then the signals flows to the second floor. And when a person walks there, he may get the signal from this the first floor, and the program would think that he's in another floor. Then it changes the entire experience and so forth. This was a, a very big challenge. At, at the end of it, we are capable of uh, changing floors, which is uh, a huge challenge in, in, o in large open spaces. Right. But you guys don't do the beacons, right? You guys are you guys are the software <coughs> that's collecting the data, that's creating the the location, the context, right? Yes, you're right. We don't care so much about the beacons. We would, you know, our advantage is uh, in the software. Okay. We have background in uh, programming for a GPS system. We know maps. Okay. And we have uh, mathematicians. We deal with the algorithms and all the techniques around it. So we would like to get out of from the business of beacons. Right. However, we couldn't find a beacon that will fit our purposes and we have been forced to create our own beacon. Oh, you have? Yes, Okay. but that's not the direction of the company. Okay, so I wonder if you can share uh, just a, a good example of some of the customer uh, customer use case 
for what are people using this for? What's kind of the value sure. that they're seeing? Are there any surprises that came out of it? Uh, two type of solutions that we are focusing right now. One is shopping centers, another is uh, hospitals. We have two hospitals that uh, are using the system. Uh, it is starting from the parking lot. Pa the person that comes to visit can record the parking lot, then going to the specific room, navigating through all the complexities of the hospital and so forth. It can be multi, uh, multi buildings, uh, campus. Uh, why do they want that data? How are, why, what are they doing with, what's the value to them of knowing, tracking you coming from the parking lot through the lobby and to your room? Well, hospitals are not, at this point, hospitals are not using it for data. They're using it as a, as a, benefit to the visitor, to the patient, and so forth. Okay, so, so it's more pushing stuff out to that person based on where they are. Uh, the helping person. the person finding his way okay. within, uh, and this is the reason, you know, uh, customer satisfaction, right. increasing the, uh, the, the uh, competitiveness nature of the hospital. Ne uh, uh, yeah, and I've, I got lost in a hospital before, so I know, <laughs> you know, if you're at a big hospital visiting a relative yes. from out of town, I literally, my brother and I got lost trying to find my grandfather in Louisville, Kentucky. We couldn't find, we were walking all over this place. It's a huge facility. Exactly, that would have been a nice exactly, thing. Exactly, I didn't exactly. think of that. So, that. so, hospital is one use case. Another yeah. one, I think we talked a little bit about the shopping the center shopping and center. so forth. Surprises. So, the first installation, uh, hospital installation, we basically commissioned to do indoor navigation for the purpose of patients and visitors and so forth. It turned out at the end of the day that the most usage came out of physicians themselves that want to know the different places they need to go, physician visitors and staff. So it kind of shifted the direction that this tool is not necessarily just for the visitor, the patient, but can be used in general for the staff and for uh, the physicians themselves. Yeah, it's interesting. It's a brand new world. And uh, it's just interesting, you guys did come from the GPS background. So you did it for outside, now you're doing it for inside. Yes, we did come from the GPS. And this gives us also some interesting advantages, the ability to navigate from outdoor, starting with, let's say, Waze or Google Map, coming to the parking lot, recording your spot using actually the GPS, the satellite signals, stepping into the hospital or to shopping centers, then the wow. software switches into indoor, right. and then you continue the navigation right. indoor. Very cool. Well, thanks for stopping by. Give us a little update. Um, Avi Sakaju from Sprio, CEO. I'm Jeff Frick. We're on the ground at the uh, Location and Context World 2014 in San Francisco at the JW Marriott, and you're watching theCUBE.